All right. This is episode two, as promised. Uh, there was episode 1.5. wasn't really quite that, in- that interesting. Interesting. It was just me sort of griping about Discord and painting a rock. But with this video, uh, I'm doing something a little more interesting. I'm looking at an old, this was a traditional pen and ink drawing I did when I was like, like I want to design my own uh, MTG creature tokens. And so I wanted to kind of revisit this idea and see if like, I could uh, get an, an interesting comic book style, like ink style, in Clip Studio Paint. And you can. It's You'll see eventually. I, I think I achieve it fairly well enough. And I, I use, I believe, just mostly the default brushes within Clip Studio for this piece. So I use just like the, the gel pen, the G pen, and I'm here I'm using the, or initially to get this sketch layout, I used the uh, uh, pencil, just the default, I think, pencil brush, that one of the default pencil brushes that comes with Clip Studio. And I really like it. Like I said in the last video, uh, it does a really good job of simulating traditional media in a way that Photoshop doesn't really do. And I like that. But it does so in a more in a, in a simple way as compared to like Corel Painter, which does a really good job when you figure out how to use it of uh, simulating traditional media like oils and charcoal and pencil and ink and all these sorts of things. It does a really good job of doing that, but it doesn't always it's not always the most user friendly. And I feel like uh, Clip Studio is like a really good little middle ground. And here I thought I would also challenge myself by uh, kind of working on some anatomy in that like I haven't really <laughs> I haven't really been practicing a whole lot this whole time during this whole pandemic. I uh, haven't really been drawing a lot. And I was scared because people often say it's kind of like if you don't use it, you lose it kind of thing with art. And to a degree, it is. But... Um, as I was going through with this, I felt really good. I felt like, you know, I, I think to some degree I've actually improved. And that's kind of also been a weird thing with me too. Like every time I've taken a break from art, uh, I feel like I make some sort of subtle improvement in my abilities. And I don't know if it's just because I sit for a few months on some ideas, on some concepts, and I kind of sit and think about past pieces I've done. I look at them. Or I like I just think about them and I kind of critique myself that whole time and I'm making mental corrections and mental notes that whole time that I'm not drawing or painting and when I actually sit down to actually do my work uh, it I'm I'm taking all that into consideration now this isn't a suggestion that you should stop working on art for you know almost four to five months which is what I kind of had to do because of the birth of my child and working and everything. I was working 10 hour days, even through through this pandemic, thankfully. But, uh, you know, it, it uh, God, there's a plane flying over right now. So annoying. Well, that's gonna be in the video. Uh, but I, I don't suggest doing that, but I think it is beneficial to take maybe a day or two off, maybe take a week off, you know, to really sit and stew and think about what it is that you're doing as far as art and your abilities and your skills. I've often said for me that my my concept of my own development as an artist has been to take so like my skill if, if I were to make a graph there's like this skill level and so the further the further uh, right you go from the left to right is like time and then up and down is like a skill level and ability. Uh, so if you were to take it, it'd, it'd be like it's there's this plat there's this incline up and then it plateaus out for a time and then it inclines up and then it plateaus out for a time, and then if you were to lay another graph on top of that, it'd be the same thing: time on the bottom, but uh, perception of quality or knowledge uh, that just continues to go. There's no plateauing. So like one of my skills are plateauing, my perception of what I view as good or what I can understand as good and skillful is still going up, uh, but my my skill is not keeping pace with that that upward trend, it plateaus up, and then eventually it catches up, and there's this sweet spot where I feel really good about my art, but then my skills plateau again, 
and my perception of art and what is good and skill continues to rise up and then it the you know skill goes up again and they they, they cross and intersect but they they're not at a constant um rate with each other and that can be extremely frustrating and depressing and i think that's part of the reason too why i didn't paint i i tried to sit down for these last five months to sit down and and paint and work and uh it was just depressing like there were some points during these last five months where i was kind of like do i really want to do art anymore is this what i want to do uh is this just gonna be like a uh a for fun thing now i guess like a hobby and i'm just gonna get a day job which i'm not opposed to uh is this and it's just it's never gonna happen and to a degree i still kind of feel like that um you know, I talked in my last video about uh, being banned from Discord and my concept of free speech, but man, if anyone's been discriminated against, it might be me because I, I think people know, I think some of these uh, businesses know about my uh, my views on things and don't want to hire me because of it. But Or it's just that I suck. It's possible that I just suck, too. Uh, and that's it's it could be a combination of both they look at my portfolio and they're like this guy sucks and also i hate his views so i hate him don't hire him but regardless uh I've, i still kind of feel to a degree like oh, is this what i want to do but that's why i'm doing this channel and, and these videos at the same time too is like i'm trying to figure out my art style and what i am and you can see me struggling with a hand here it's pretty awful and i'm using selection tools to try and get the anatomy right but I'm learning, you know, and uh, hands are hard. I still have never figured them out. But I thought I would challenge myself here by using a foreshortened pose. And at the end of the day, I just decided to look up some reference of a hand. I, I did all of this drawing from pretty much memory, which is probably a bad idea. But at the same time, it worked out. So I don't know. I don't know what the solution is there. But I had to look up a, a hand kind of in a foreshortened pose and I just found a picture of one online and then just used that as reference and then tried to put it in here. I should have done it from the beginning. It would have saved me a lot of headaches. So uh, I highly suggest that you um, you do your own research before you get too involved in drawing. Because you can see I'm starting to get detailed on the head here and I'm having a good time and then I get to this hand and I'm like, this sucks. Anyways, uh, you can see me using the, uh, this is just the default pen in Painter, or in uh, Clip Paint. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, I have to say, I it feels like ink. Um, it's not exactly the same. Like, I don't know if I could get the stippling effect that, uh, that uh, I got with the traditional pen and ink. And I think traditional pen and ink, at the end of the day, will always be two degrees superior and look better than any kind of digital simulation can attempt it to do but I really enjoyed the way this pen and a digital sphere handled um, I feel like and I feel like as I'm working through my uh, what my style is and I plan on making a subscribe star only video for subscribers which will be taking this image from like kind of a comic book look to a more painterly look because I feel like for me my style has kind of been um, trying to go from like photo bashing I I use it but it's not me I guess you could say it's a good way of getting work done quick but it isn't who I am as an artist and what I want to be as an artist. I, I like having that ability in my toolbox, but ultimately that's not what I want to be. And I don't want my portfolio to be this giant collection of photo collages, essentially. And that's not to like talk crap about artists that do that. Like You can make some pretty, pretty fantastic pieces and illustrations using that method. And it does... I'm going to go over it. I am going to go over it again in one of my videos here with Clip Studio to see if... I can paint with it or I've, if if I've, I've mentioned this before like that that you can photo bash in clip studio so if, if that is your style and you that's how you work and 
that's what you need to do like you can do it in this but I want to go for a more painterly not photorealistic look and it's not because I can't do it to a degree it kind of is but it's also just doesn't interest me and that's kind of been one thing I think I've discovered is I've kind of been barking up the wrong tree and also I really enjoy this comic book style I'm, I'm working on a comic book with a friend of mine and um, it's kind of like it kind of takes place in the 1920s in like uh, New England and I've kind of been experimenting with trying to find my style as far as comic book art goes and the funny thing is that I got into art back in 2012 where I got back into it because I liked comic books I liked comic book art and I wanted to be a comic book artist uh, at the time I think The Walking Dead was I don't think it was a TV show yet um, but I was reading the comics before it was a TV show and before the TV show ruined the comics for me then ruined the comics the comics are still there and they're still fine they're still great but I love I liked Charlie Adler's uh, Adler's style of illustration in the comic like very heavy usage of blacks and graphical shapes I just found that to be a very like cool style and it fit that book very well I'm not much into like the superhero style and look but I, I can appreciate that as well but that's not really me um, but that's why I started drawing again it's like hey like and and that was because as a kid one of the things that I said I wanted to be when I grew up was um, a cartoonist because I loved I did love reading superhero comics then and so it's kind of been like this journey which I think is kind of what rekindled and made me excited about art again was like trying to find what ex it got me excited about art first of all when I was a child and then again when I got back to being involved in it eight years ago uh, and trying to study it again I mean comic books are what got me excited and I think I only fell into this idea that I want to be a concept artist which has not panned out the way I would like it to have panned out I only fell into that because well it seemed like that was the most reasonable career field to go into because it didn't seem like comics was going to be an option for me at the time and I liked game video games too and it was kind of like this uh look squirrel moment as far as art is concerned i guess looking back on it of i was focused on one thing and then i said look a squirrel which the squirrel was uh concept art and i think i was attracted to illustration too just in general i liked looking at the art and books and um pen and ink art and and ex for example has always been really i've always been interested in that as well and so that was kind of like I think what inspired me originally and I kind of lost sight of that and now I've kind of regained it and I feel as I was working on this piece for example like hey I feel really good about working in this way like line art and doing that and I, I do feel like if I wanted to do concept art this is a perfectly fine method if the art director is fine with it like simple line art and adding value to that like you can still get a sense of 3d space and everything in that and actually when I would draw or design like uh, mechas or vehicles and things like that I had to do it in this line art fashion and if I tried to do like a painterly approach to it uh, it just never worked out well and so I kind of figured you know I really struggle with with the painterly approach to vehicles and and mechs and all, all these like technological aspects of what I'm designing why don't I take that approach to everything and it would probably be better and I think what I planted this seed in my head was I took a perspective drawing class I've taken two perspective drawing classes at the Academy of Art University when I was trying to go for my bachelor's which I'm uncertain whether I'm going to return in the fall or spring it's been really hard with a baby and school's expensive and with the way the economy is now I'm not sure taking on massive amounts of debt is necessarily a good idea. So I've kind of thought maybe I'll take some classes at CGMA, if you've never heard of that before. Um, I took classes there a couple years, quite a few years ago, I think around 2014 or 15. And uh, I really liked the, the teachers there. They're industry professionals working in you know con as concept artists illustrators 3d modelers all that kind of stuff they have like practical knowledge 
but at Academy of Art, I'm getting sidetracked here, I took this perspective drawing class which required us to draw traditionally with pen and ink. And I really, really discovered like, hey, I can draw like really well in perspective with this and with these methods. And yeah, it's a little more time consuming, but I can get results that I am happy with as an artist. That I look at the piece and I'm like, you know what, I'm okay with that. Because before, it was always just like, ah, perspective, or oh, it's this, like, I'll just photo bash it, or I'll just do whatever. You know, I'll just throw, I'll just build a 3D model, and then I don't have to think about perspective. And that, for a concept artist and a production artist, I think is a perfectly valid method to have. But I just did not get a thrill out of that. I did not, that did not get me excited about art, and excited about my own work, or the freelance or commissioned work that I was getting. And so I feel like this is more me. And I think you also have to figure out like, what am I good at as well? And I, I think like characters and the subject matter being less sci-fi, which I can do. Um, I mean, I did a lot of work for Traveler, for Mongoose Publishing. Obviously, I talk about that a lot, which is all like, you know, sci-fi spaceship stuff. And I can do it and it, my work has appeared in their books, but I don't feel like I'm like, this is my thing, you know. I like the fantasy art. I like uh, characters in more natural environments and that sort of thing. So trying to figure out like what I like uh, and how to get to what I like. So again, pen and ink, line art, that kind of stuff has just been absolutely critical and crucial to me kind of rekindling my love of art. And I don't know what the lesson is here for that. Um, I kind of got it in school, but like I feel like you could discover that in other ways too. So I, I think for me the lesson here is if you're feeling like you're st you're stagnating in your art and you're kind of like how I was when you're looking at your art and you're like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. Is this even what I want to do with my life? And you feel bad feeling that way too, I think, right? Like. I mean, sound off in the comments if you felt this way. I want to hear your stories, and I think other people need to hear your stories as well. But you you, uh, you feel bad because it's like, man, I'm contemplating giving up a dream. Like, that sucks. Uh, that doesn't feel good. That feels like a failure. And I think it's okay to question and doubt at times. And so I think the, the remedy for that is to be to take a step back and, and kind of analyze your feelings like what I did and just kind of go like, hmm, why do I feel this way? You know, why, uh, why, why does this bother me? You know, um, why do I, why do I feel burnt out? And for me, it was, I think I've been in this medium for too long and I've been too focused on, um, I've been too focused on this medium and a certain goal that I'm actually not that interested in. And I think being forced to use a medium, so pen and ink that I hadn't used in a long time or not really at all, kind of made me realize something. It First of all, it was something new and different, but it also made me realize like, hey, this is a process that I really kind of enjoy, that I'm I'm kind of into and i get a result from it that i am not that i don't hate maybe i can do this so maybe my my uh, advice to you would be like to if you're if you're doing a digital art or whatever art you're doing like let's say you're a traditional artist and you feel stagnant you know like you're an oil painter like maybe try gouache or watercolor or acrylic or make a switch to digital and like try and work it digitally and see if that like rekindles something in you and it kind of can give you an insight into like how your method is frustrating you i think that's what it was down to it's like my method for creating art was we're now working counterintuitive to how i wanted to create art like it was making me frustrated and i just didn't like it and so i needed to do work in a different medium which school happened to but doesn't always have to be school forced me to uh, do and work in and it, it rewired my brain or let me see my art from a different perspective and I think that's what 
it comes down to. And again, I think too that comes down to like sometimes you got to take a break from art. It's not like other fields. Uh, you know, during my day job, I I work on uh, trailers, luxury camper trailers, and I you know do this electrical systems and the plumbing and stuff like that in them, and you know, I can do that all day. That's fine. Like it's not, it's not a creative task, but art is creative and it comes from a different place than like I'm doing like manufacturing work or I'm, I'm working at Starbucks or whatever. Like, you know, it's not, and that's not to say that those jobs are lesser, of course, but that they just require something different that doesn't run out the same way that creativity feels like it runs out or gets like dry, you know? And so you have to take a break. You have to look at things from different perspectives. And sometimes I think maybe those, you know, those things uh, help as well. Like, you know, when I'm working on a trailer and I encounter a troubleshooting problem, sometimes I have to like step away from it and think about it, go do a different task in order to come back to it and be like, wait, the solution is this. And I was so involved in the problem, I couldn't see the solution. So... Yeah, so far I've really enjoyed uh, Clip Studio Paint here. It's been a lot of fun to use, and you can see me here. There's a really cool way of using halftones. It's very easy to use, and I'm just kind of experimenting with it here. I eventually um, go all the way with it in halftones for the, the gray art, gray light, the grayscale art, but then I realized as I added color to it, the way I did it just didn't look very well, so I didn't look very good so I, I eventually remove it but yeah it's really simple to like you know select the objects on that layer add a half tone kind of texture to it and then you get this like cool comic book look with your ink work and so I think that that works out kind of nicely and um, I, I think to a degree there's some things in clip studio that are hard to get to that Photoshop has easier access to but at the same time, for 60 bucks, which is I think what I paid for this program a couple, a few, like end of last year, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And definitely the more I use it, the more I see this as a easy uh, replacement for Photoshop. If you're willing to learn a new program, because like I've said in other videos, like man, Adobe with its renting software, it's not cool. I greatly dislike that. So it's kind of been, um, it's been nice to use a, a program that's cheap that I own, but it's like functionally the same thing. That's the beauty of, of markets and capitalism, you know, is competition makes things and tools for us consumers to be much more affordable and better, uh, and can get people in on, uh, in, in expressing their art in a much more clear and cheaper way than like trying to find Photoshop CS6 online. Because let's be honest too, not only is the Creative Cloud like buggy, or not only is it like expensive, but it is buggy. And like my computer, I have a, a gaming computer that my brother helped me build. Like it's not a crappy computer, but man, the Creative Cloud would lag out and brushes would lag out and it, it was just a god-awful program and if you're running like the latest version of the creative cloud I always had to step it back because they're you know every time they'd come out with a new release there was these hideous bugs and well when I first ran this program I did have some issues with like crashes and stuff like that I haven't had a crash in an extremely long time so so far this program has held up extremely well over the last the minimal use over the last five months but I did do some freelance work for Traveler in it and it held up well the art was accepted so it works you know you can get the job done so i can't complain too much i'm i'm relatively happy with this software and i think the more i use it and especially now with figuring out like i like this line art style and i want to kind of move forward with that um i've discovered that i i I'm, I'm glad I made this purchase. And again, it, I think it was like 60 bucks. And I think pro version is not much more. Like, you're going to end up at $10 or $12 a month, whatever the Creative Cloud is for just Photoshop. You're going to end up paying more for that than this at the end of the day. 
and again i think this is perfectly comparable you own the software forever and you know you never have to worry about uh um subscription fees and like i said i just like the fact that i own my software <laughs> like that's just infinitely better in so many ways than renting software so here I'm just uh, working on atmospheric perspective. You can see the, the background is a lighter color than the back. The far background trees are a slightly darker color. And now the, the foreground is where all the contrast is. And that's like a general rule of when you're doing um, uh, atmospheric perspective for your art. And it's a good way of creating depth in your painting or your illustration without uh, real perspective there like i don't have buildings here like having uh what's the term diminution going towards the perspective going through towards the focal point point or the the vanishing point but you can do this with like mountains and and in a landscape painting you know like the mountains in the far background there's not going to be as much contrast they're going to be closer to the color of the sky and that can help send and as they as objects get closer and closer to us the viewer they become more contrasted and saturated and there's more colors involved so that's a good rule of thumb for when you're trying to create perspective or distance in a painting or an illustration like this where it's it's not as easy to show like vanishing points and uh, perspective lines and stuff like that and here I'm just using the the same ink pen but bigger to create uh, you know uh, uh, light and you can see how it already kind of comes together a little bit so like I said I, I eventually tried doing the half tones on here which is very easy to do in Clip Studio if you're into that into that kind of thing but ultimately I decided to not use that method because um, it just didn't look well with the colors but for the black and white art it actually looked kind of cool and I kind of kind of liked it like so that's another little interesting thing i'm working on this comic with a friend of mine and that's kind of why i did this too is like uh what what style do i want to go with in this comic because i've re he has like he has more pages written he's writing it i'm doing the art he has more pages than me written uh written than i have art for um but it's because i i really want to feel good about my art and i'm thinking we're gonna probably end up self-publishing uh so if that's the case i want to be doubly sure that when i sell a product to someone and my art is inside it that it's going to look good and it's going to be what i wanted <clears throat> and how i want to be proud of it you know i don't want to ever release a piece of art to a client or um a piece of art that i'm selling that like i didn't feel confident in so this is this piece was a really good uh, way for me to feel a lot better about myself. Real quick, too, I want to throw out there if you're still watching and listening that you can support my art channel at Subscribestar. I think I said in the last video, like don't do it unless you feel like I'm putting out content worth doing that. But it helps my channel out a lot more. What helps even more is if you subscribe and and share videos with uh, friends. Um, friends and family uh that helps me a lot as well i'm trying to I'm trying to, i feel like i'm trying to do something cool here with a much more cheaper much cheaper product for art than photoshop is that's much more affordable and um that can allow a lot of people to have access to art that otherwise wouldn't be able to have access to creating good digital art with a solid program that's like professional level i think and i would consider clip studio paint to be a professional level program but yeah i'll have links in the video description about how you can support the channel monetarily and uh yeah so here i'm playing with layers and uh trying to find a cool blending mode for them to get a cool and interesting color i kind of picked this greenish color on purpose because green uh, is kind of like a sickly color uh, that's why you see like emojis when they feel sick they put like green on the cheeks or like people make puke green even though most people don't puke up green 
because it's it's generally considered like a color sickness and then I'm trying to find like red so red is a complementary color to green and I have yellow in there too which is like analogous to green so red is complementary and kind of um, causes a lot heavier contrast and makes the focal point more interesting so the contrasting and complementary colors are on the main character here which is a zombie and I try and avoid using complementary colors in the background because uh, that would distract away from the focal point which I want to be the zombie so uh, I'm trying to just find cool interesting ways of coloring and I'm adding color to various parts of his body I don't know if they'd actually be there on a corpse so for instance like red on the nose and cheeks and fingertips um, that's generally there for like a living thing but obviously a zombie is kind of questionable so I'm trying to uh, figure that out and then I'm just working for mostly solid colors in the background to kind of again not have those contrasting colors there and to keep the focal point on the zombie so anyways uh, I'm just kind of manipulating the image here we're getting towards the end of the video I want to thank you guys for watching and again if you feel like you want to support my channel please subscribe please comment please like the video uh, check out subscribe star check out my website John Torres dot art uh, I'm always open for commissions if I have the time to do it which I do right now to a certain degree um, especially soon since in the last video I said I'm quitting my day job and doing the stay-at-home dad thing and f gonna attempt to f go back to freelancing so I'm always open for that as well anyways I want to thank you guys for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video uh, and uh, hopefully it'll be uh, an interesting one. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll see. I'll catch you guys later.